Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, X dot, E dot, L dot, O. And today we're gonna to be going over MPL's RS5K Manager inside of Reaper. This is a great way to actually get your drum rack set up for Reaper. Uh, and if you're a person that does like MPC style, you can put samples in here. You can use macros. You can also even save your settings and create kits by a press of a button. So let me show you how to actually get it set up and get it working. Let's go. All right, so here we are in Reaper and this theme is called Reaper Tips. Uh, the first thing you will need in order to get this to work is a SWS extension and Rea Pack. I have a video showing you how to actually install both of these features inside of Reaper so it can get you up and running automatically. So once you download Rea Pack, it'll also come with MPL scripts already installed. So you don't have to worry about that. As soon as you get the Rea Pack installed, you should have all of his stuff in there as well. So you would just basically go up to your extensions. Once you have your SWS extensions installed, you go to your Rea Pack and you basically install or you can manage uh, all of your packs. This is the one right here. This MPL scripts is the one that you will need. And then you basically browse the packages and all the packages are here. So basically you can just select all of them. I think this is probably the easiest way to do it. Then go to actions and then install slash update selection. So this way, everything that you actually have inside of your rear packs will be updated and installed automatically this way. All right. And once you actually have that installed, you can go up to your actions, go to actions, go to show action list, or just hit shift in the question mark on your keyboard and it'll bring you up to your actions list. And basically what you want to type in here is R S five K. And you could type in manager if you want to. All right. And the one we want to look at is going to be this first one here that says manager background. This is the one that we want. I personally made a shortcut uh, on my toolbar so I can actually just pull it up anytime I do need it. So I'm just going to hit run. And mine's actually is docked. I have it docked down here in this bottom section. So you can always dock these this uh, down here at the bottom. Uh, let's get it started. So the first thing you need to do is add a track. So I'm just gonna just double click and it's gonna automatically add a track. And once I do that, the script automatically sets up the RS5K manager down here. So as you see, it comes with a pad overview, which is this section here. So if I, un if I just click it, it's gonna remove it. So the pad overview is what's down here. Then you have your drum rack. This is the drum rack. So if I click it, it's gonna remove the drum rack, right? And the sampler down here is when you actually add a sound, you'll see the sampler pop up. So basically it gives you another resampomatic 5000 like right in here. You can you don't have to actually pull it up on its own. It'll actually pull up inside of this script. All right. So what I want to do is show you guys how to actually create a database inside of Reaper. What this will do is allow you to put all your drums in one particular area. So that way, once you're using this, you can create a database and pull it up at any time and scroll through different sounds. I know it sounds very confusing right now, but when I show you, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm gonna show you how to actually do this using my smash kit. So let's go. All right, so here is my smash kit. So let's say I wanted to, I'm gonna do the snares, right? So if I, I have a folder already created inside of my smash kit. So if you downloaded the smash kit, which the link is below in the description, basically you'll have all of them in folders. So you can right click on here and it gives you an option that says make database from folder. So basically it's gonna create a folder for all of my snares for the X kit. And as you see right here, I have my snares, I have my perks, I have my open hat. So all of my kits are in their own separate folder. Uh, the reason this is important is because when you try to search in here, you want to search for that same exact sound. You don't want it to search for through everything. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Let's say we did the kicks. So I'm gonna click on the kicks, right? And on the first kick here is my uh, bipolar kick. So I'm gonna drag it down to the first instance of the manager. And once I drop this in here, as you see, it gives you an option to mute solo and it tells you the name of the actual sample that you dropped in here. 
and it's telling you that it's on C1, which is number 36 on your keyboard if you're just playing from uh, the piano roll, right? And right here is your Resamplematic 5000, which is the same as pulling it up here. So this is the same as this. So you have your, your one shot, which is set on right now, one shot or loop. This is the stuff down here. Like this same obey note off is this note off right here. So if I click on this, as you see, it removed it from here. So this is the same as that. So all of these settings are pretty much the same as it would be inside of the Resamplematic 5000. Like your attack to case, sustain and release is the same as doing it up here. Um, your starting end times right here, you could do the same thing for your starting end times on the sample over here. I think it's really, really cool he has this set up on here. Um, and let's say you wanted to actually choose a different kick, you can go to the next kick, right? And it changes in here as it does in here. So I just move the kick to, as you see the kick bump, which is the next kick on the list. So really, really cool um, options that you have in here. It's like I said, it's the same as the Resamplematic 5000 for here, but it just makes it a little more convenient to have it on the kick itself or on the kit itself. So I'm gonna close out the Resamplematic 5000 and let's go through some of the other things that's on here. So you have an option to do macros. The macros are connected to whatever you have set up for this kick. If I go over this macro, right, which is the first one, and I go to click on anything in here. So let's say I do, let's say I do attack, right? So I click on attack and I move the attack, right? Just to know that this is the one I wanted to link to. And I hit add link. As you see now, this macro one is telling me that it's the attack that I just set up here. So you can set up macros for different things. I think that's super cool. Uh, so let's say this macro here, you can go to actions as well, this actions option, and it'll give you pitch, gain, and attack. So let's say we did this one, let's say we did pitch for this one. So now I have a pitch here for this knob. And if I change the pitch, So that's what a way you can actually add different macros onto your, your sample itself. All right. So I'm gonna remove it off of there. And this would be the attack, but I'm gonna take that off. So I don't need the attack on there. Right. So now you get, you know how to actually add macros in here. So the next thing we have is called like the MIDI MIDI and OSC map. So basically you can get it to MIDI learn things on here as well. I'm gonna use this re-EQ. All right, so I have this on here. Um, let's say I wanted to do like, the, you know, a low pass kind of thing on here. I can hit learn and I can use one of my, this knob on my keyboard. I can do a filter really easy right here inside of the MIDI mapping. So you can map anything in here um, from your keyboard or just whatever you want to map. You can actually map it right here inside of this tool. And if you want to remove it, you can remove it here. Uh, it doesn't have to be a parent. It could actually be like a child as well. So if I had something on this track, I can also set it up in here to map uh, MIDI wise on here. So I think that's super cool. I think I, li I really like the fact that he uh, added that on here as well. So I'm gonna close that one out, All right? And I did show you what the pad overview is. This is the drum rack. So this database mapping is what is, uh, it had me stumped for a minute. I really like it now. It's a really cool way to set up drum kits inside of this RS 5K manager. get it started, you have to have at least one thing inside the rack. Um, so now if I wanted to, I can go and load up my kits. So if I go to click here and I go to the X one, right? So these are all databases. You can save the, the current database. You have four slots to choose from. And that's why I was saying it's cool to create a database inside of Reaper. So I have my databases here for my snares, kicks all from the smash kit. 
So all of them are already set up so I can go to my X1. For the X1, I have everything set up up to this track here. So I have kick, I have a snare, if you can see snares here. It has a clap, hats, hats two, and an open hat. So I have five channels already set up in here. So if I hit on this button here that says new kit, as you see it added kicks and snares and all those other things on here. And uh, as you see on the, the drum rack itself, it has all the kicks and snares so I can and it randomly picks sounds straight from your database. So the first thing you want to do is just basically name the pad, make sure you're picking a database. So if you click on here, these are all the databases that you have. It'll show up in here. So these are all, these are all my databases that I have set up currently. And you could put it for kick snares, whatever you want to put it for uh, and set that up. You can even lock the, the note in so that if you do a change or a new kit, that it won't change this one, whatever one is highlighted. So whatever one you have highlighted is the one that it'll lock onto. So let's say we go here, right? To this hi-hat, open hat. This is what the open hat sounds like. So let's say I hit new sample. What this new sample is gonna do is gonna pick a random sound from this open hi-hat. So if I click on here, see it picked a different sound. So if I hit it again, it's gonna pick another open hi-hat in here. And if you wanna do the whole kit, you hit on new kit and it'll search for a new kit for this whole thing in here. I think that's super cool. Uh, it gives you a very versatile way of actually picking out your drums. So you're not always picking the same thing every single time. It'll randomly pick what you want in there. So the, chi the children chain is basically letting you know all the things you have under this parent. So this is the parent, this top one is your parent and anything under it is gonna be the child. And you can have a child underneath a child as well in here. So I thought that was pretty cool. So this is your volume. This little first one is your volume for each of the tracks. This is the pan left and right for each of the tracks. And this gives you an option to do choke groups. So if you wanted to do a group, you have up to four that you can actually do. So that'll allow the the sounds to cut themselves off. So if you're using a sample inside here and you chop the sample up and put them on each individual part, you can actually put them in choke groups so you can cut them off when you're playing the samples back in here. So once again, this rack is really, really dope. And you also have an option for, you know, your actions, anything that was set up on here, you can clear your groups right here using the actions. For device, device is, is another way you can actually stack and layer your sounds inside the manager. Let's say I wanted it to be this, this open hat and let's see if we can find something else. Let's say we do a perk with it, right? So every time we do it, we're gonna get this bark, right? So I'm gonna drop this where it says new instrument here. So as you see, it made it into a double like child basically. So now anytime I play this key, it should play both. Right? So now you have both of them layered on top of each other. So yeah, so this was all the things that's in here and the sampler of course was the, you know, just the, the RS5K. All right. And let's say that you did want to actually save this kit as it is. You always can do that. You can hold down uh, shift, click all of them, right click, and you can always make a save track as a track template. So let's say you go and I have the manager kits here. I'm just gonna go, uh, you just hit save. And now um, if you start over, I'm gonna go to another tab. As you see, it still stays up as long as you keep it open, it'll stay up in there. And I can right click in here and I can go to track from template and I'm gonna go to manage kits and I'm gonna go to YouTube one. So boom, so now the YouTube one stuff is here again.
and you get to see all this stuff inside the RS5K manager. All right, and let me just make sure that I showed you how to actually set up the database because it was the most confusing part for me. So I want to make sure you guys have it as well. So basically you add a track and you have to have at least one thing in here. So we're going to actually just create a kit. So let's go through uh, setting it up. So I'm going to push this one here. And this is a kick and we want to go to the database map. And this time we're actually going to put it on clear the current database map, put a clap. All right, so we have our clap. All right, so we have our snare here. All right, so we have a hat. And we have another hi hat. All right, we have an open hat. And if you wanted to put perks or anything else, we could just add the rest of them later. But I want to make sure I showed you how to do this because, like I said, this is the most confusing part for me. But you have to have your database set up in order to actually do this. So the first one you want to click on is the kick and you want to name it so you name it whatever you want to name it so let's name it kick let's say kick one so now that one is called kick one and you want to go to where it says database name click on the database name and we know it's coming from the kicks so we're going to add the kicks there so we're going to go to this second one which is the clap and we're going to name it hit okay database it's going to be claps All right, so now we have all of them on here. Now, if you wanted to lock these in, you would have to hit on lock and basically it'll lock that sound in there. So anytime you pull it up, it'll just lock this sound. If you want to do a new sample, it will search through this open database if you want to do that. So now what we want to do is actually save this. So if you go up here to where it says untitled, click on that, and you want to go to whatever slot you have open, as you see, I have two empty slots. So I'm gonna go to slot three on here. It's gonna give me an option to name it. So let's name it uh, YouTube one, all right? Hit okay. Now you have all these things set up on here. So anytime you create a new one of these, you will have it set up uh, and let me show you that. So we have nothing selected. We just need to throw something in here. So I'm just gonna grab one and just drag it down here, all right? So I'm gonna go to my database map. And the first thing I want to do is clear the current database map. And I'm going to go load. And I'm going to hit on this one that says YouTube one. As you see, it didn't do anything. You're like, all right, well, what is it supposed to do X? Now, if I hit on new kit, it's going to populate all those things for this kit. And as you see, it did all of the, the stuff in here. So your kick, your clap, your snare. So. Right, so you have all those set up. If I hit new kit again, it's gonna change the sounds that's currently in there. And this took me a while to actually get, so I made sure I follow, uh, let you guys see exactly how I did it. So that way you can actually set yours up as well. But uh, pretty much this is the end of this video. I hope you guys really, really, really enjoyed this one. Like I said, you will definitely need SWS and Rhea pack in order to get this big shout outs to MPL for making these scripts. He makes a whole lot of scripts and a whole lot of really good ones. Uh, and this happens to be one of the ones that uh, attracted me the most. And I wanted to make sure I got it out here to show you guys all the steps I had to go through to get all this stuff set up. But with that being said, that's pretty much into this video. Like I said, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you are liking and subscribing to the channel. And once again, I want to thank you guys for watching Learning Reaper. Till next time. Peace.